Hello friends, today we are going to see the trick to solve transfer characteristics based sums. Basically, the sums where we have to find the VO versus VI, okay? So let's jump directly to the sum and there only we will see the trick. So the first sum is from EC2006, assuming the diodes D1 and D2 of the circuit shown in the figure to be ideal ones, the transfer characteristics of the circuit will be. So here we have this circuit and we have to figure out which is the transfer characteristics for this circuit. Okay, so first take a look how I solve this sum and then I will show you the trick. So you can see for VI less than 10 volt we have VO equals to 10 volt and VI greater than 10 volt we have VO equals to VI. So from the option you can see this A is the correct option. Interesting right. So first let's see what is the difference between our trick and the traditional way. Okay. So the traditional way to solve this type of problem is we have to assume certain condition. Okay. We have to assume certain condition without knowing which diode will on at which condition first we have to assume certain condition and at each condition we have to check whether d1 is on or d2 is on okay so basically whatever may be your condition is you have to check whether your diode is being on or off in all condition and after that only you will figure out your transfer characteristics okay this is your traditional way but with the trick what we are going to do is first we will check for what condition our diodes are being turned on then accordingly we will check for the condition okay so you are getting the difference what we have done here instead of assuming the condition we will derive the condition okay so let's see the trick in detail so here you can see we were having this circuit right we have two diodes right so we have to first figure out for what condition these diodes are going to turn on okay so first let's check for d1 so here you can see for d1 we have vp is equals to vi vp this is your vp vn basically what i have done i have just open circuited these two diodes and i am checking what is its vp and what is vn this thing i have explained you in detail when i was explaining you the trick for solving multiple diode sums okay so if you don't know this you can watch this video from the given i button link okay so our vp will become vi this vp will become vi and vn will become 10 volt why because here there is no current right if we open this diode you can see there will be no current in this branch so that's why the voltage drop across this resistor will be zero volt basically there will be no current in this branch so whatever the voltage present here will be appear at this node okay so that's why we will get vn is equals to 10 volt right now let's check for d2 d2 you can see this vp is connected to 5 volt right so that's what i have written here vn you can see this vn is nothing but this node okay and we and now only we have checked that this node is equals to 10 volt okay so we can say that vn is equals to 10 volt for diode to be on vp should be greater than vn right here we are not comparing with 0.7 volt because here we have already known that d1 and d2 are ideal diodes okay so we will compare with zero so here basically we will we are comparing like this vp minus vn should be greater than zero this is nothing but vp should be greater than vn okay so that's what i am comparing here if vp is greater than vn then only we will say diode is on okay so for d1 to be on vp should be greater than vn so basically vp should be greater than 10 volt okay so this is the condition for d1 and for d2 you can see vp is 5 volt and vn is 10 volt it means vp is less than 10 volt okay itself so here we won't take get any condition for d2 to be turned on so we will say this d2 will be always turned off so now we know the condition when our d1 and d2 is going to turn on and off okay so using this we will check for the input condition okay so you can see for d1 to be turned on we want that vp should be greater than 10 volt it means vi should be greater than 10 volt okay so basically we will check for vi less than 10 volt and vi greater than 10 volt okay this is the two condition that we have to check it okay so that's what here i have checked for vi less than 10 volt this diode will be off right so basically this diode will be replaced by open circuit so you can see if we remove this diode this vi won't have any relation with this output okay this output will be dependent only on this branch voltage okay so you can see this branch voltage when this diode is turned off it is nothing but 10 volt right you can 
see like this here you have one resistor which is of 2 ohm this is 10 volt and this branch is already open as we know that d2 is turned off right and we have this vo as you can see this is a open path so there won't be any current i is zero so it means there won't be any voltage drop across two ohms so whatever the voltage present here will be equal to vo okay so we will say vo is equals to 10 volt for this condition vi less than 10 volt okay this is what i have written vi less than 10 volt d1 is off and vo is equals to 10 volt okay so you have to write in this fashion only okay such that your time consumption will be less okay so now let's check for this vi greater than 10 volt okay so vi greater than 10 volt you know that this diode is getting turned on now okay so if this diode is turned on it means we have to replace this diode with short circuit right so you can see this vi is getting connected to vo from this path okay so we can say at this time vo will be equals to vi right so we will say for vi greater than 10 volt d1 will be on vo is equals to vi okay so we have to check for the option which is satisfying this condition okay so vi less than 10 volt vo should be equals to 10 volt okay so option a is satisfying this and vo should be equals to vi for greater than 10 volt okay so you can see this a satisfies both the option while if you check for b this is wrong at first condition only this fails this also wrong first condition fails this is also wrong as you can see here it is equals to vi for less than 10 volt okay but we have figured out that it is equals to 10 volt when vi is less than 10 volt okay so we will say this a option is correct option okay now let's say the second sum this is of ec 2011 we are given with this circuit and the condition is said that assuming forward voltage drop of diodes to be 0.7 the input output transfer characteristics of the circuit is okay so here also we have the same question that is we have to find out the transfer characteristics but the only difference in the condition is that now diodes are not ideal here the diodes are practical having voltage drop of 0.7 volt when it is forward bias okay note one thing it is mentioned that forward voltage drop of diodes okay so this condition is saying that 0.7 volt for forward bias it is for both the diode you can see zener diode is also there and this pn junction diode is also there okay so this condition is valid for both when it is forward biased okay now let's use the trick here let's say this is our d1 okay so for d1 you can see vn is equals to 5 volt from this voltage and vp is equals to vi note one thing i am checking this after opening all these two diodes okay so basically what i have done is i am considering this circuit is like this okay so this is my circuit just to save my time i'm not redrawing it again and again okay just for showing you i have drawn it again so here you can see this vn of this diode is equals to 5 volt and vp is nothing but this vi okay so we can say vp is equals to vi since we know this diode is not ideal okay so we have to use this condition for checking this diode to be turned on vp minus vn should be greater than 0 0.7 volt okay we know vn is 5 volts so for diode to be turned on our condition become vp should be greater than vn is 5 volt okay so minus 5 will go there it will be 5.7 volt this is the condition for d1 to be turned on okay now let's check for zener diode for zener you can see it is vp and it is vn okay so let's write it as vpz and vnz okay so you can see vpz is equals to 0 volt always vnz is nothing but vi okay so for zener diode to be forward bias okay first i am considering it into forward bias for forward bias vpz minus vnz should be greater than 0 0.7 right vpz we know 0 minus vnz should be greater than 0 0.7 we can write it as minus vnz should be greater than 0 0.7 if you multiply minus sign to this equation we will get vnz less than minus 0 0.7 I have just multiplied minus to all this term so minus vnz will change to vnz this greater than sign will become less than sign and 0 0.7 will become minus 0 0.7 this is the basic thing that you should know it okay so we get to know the condition for forward bias for the zener diode now let's check for reverse bias also for reverse bias the voltage across this zener diode should be greater than 10 volt okay so we can write it as like this vnz minus vpz should be greater than 10 volt 
right vpz we know it is equals to zero so we can say the condition for die zener diode to be turned on it is vnz should be greater than 10 volt you can write it as vo should be greater than 10 volt for zener diode to be in reverse biased okay at that time it will be replaced by this 10 volt itself okay so now let's check for the input condition we get to know the important terms as this minus 0 0.7 5.7 and this 10 volt okay so we will check for all this input values okay so first let us check for when vi is less than minus 0.7 okay it means that vi can be minus 0.9 minus 1 or minus 2 anything okay vi should be less than minus 0.7 okay don't confuse in this okay at this time we know that our zener is going to be in forward biased okay so we will say at this condition our zener diode will be forward biased and we will replace the zener diode with a voltage of 0.7 volt this will be minus and this will be plus okay take care of this minus will be corresponding to this cathode and positive will be corresponding to anode okay so we can say our vo will be equals to minus 0.7 at this condition so now let's check for another v in condition so now we will consider for vi greater than minus 0.7 and less than 5.7 okay so we are considering all the values which are helpful for this okay so i have considered these two values okay minus 0 0.7 and 5.7 so you can see if vi is greater than minus 0 0.7 it means vi can be minus 0 0.6 okay at that time we can say our zener is not going to be in forward biased okay also it won't be in reverse biased why because the condition for reverse bias is that v and z should be greater than 10 volt it means that our vi should be greater than 10 volt okay but here it is not there so we can say zener is neither in forward bias nor in reverse bias okay now let's check for d1 for d1 we know that d1 will be on only if vp is greater than 5.7 it means vi is greater than 5.7 you can see here we don't have vi greater than 5.7 here we have vi less than 5.7 okay so none of this diode will be turned on okay so basically both of these branches are disconnected now okay so you don't have anything so we will say we have a circuit like this vi is here this is some resistance and here it is po okay so we will say whatever the voltage present here vi will be equals to vo okay vo is equals to vi why because there won't be any current so this voltage across this resistor will be zero okay so vo is equals to vi for this condition now let's check for another condition which is vi greater than 5.7 let's consider this 10 volt also so we will check for vi greater than 5.7 but less than 10 volt okay so for this condition you can rewrite this like this vi is greater than 5.7 and it is less than 10 volt okay so so such that you will understand more better so here we know for vi greater than 5.7 this d1 will be on okay but zener diode won't be on because for zener diode to be on v and z should be greater than 10 volt it means vi should be greater than 10 volt but here we don't have that condition okay so we will say that d1 is on okay and we will be having this circuit right so it is something like this 0 0.7 5 volt and here we have vo okay so we will say vo is equals to 5.7 volt for this condition but now at this condition you are seeing that vo become independent to vi okay so now vo is not going to increase but vo is going to saturate for 5.7 volt okay so we are not going to check for vi greater than 10 volt as vo won't be greater than 5.7 volts so the condition for zener to be turned on basically vo to be greater than 10 volt this condition will never come okay so we will say this condition like this for vi greater than 5.7 vo is equals to 5.7 volt okay so vo got saturated to 5.7 from vi is equals to 5.7 volt so let's see which option satisfies this here you can see in this a option it is not satisfying for negative voltage you can see for vi less than minus 0.7 volt vo should be equals to minus 0.7 volt so here you can see from this option this C option is satisfying this condition okay now let's check for positive voltage also for VI greater than minus 0 0.7 but less than 5.7 VO should be equals to VI here you can see minus 0 0.7 to 5.7 it is VO equals to VI let's check for this one VI greater than 5.7 volt it should be VO equals to 5.7 volt saturated so here you can see 
in this option yes it is also satisfying this condition also okay so our correct option will be this c1 okay well it took me more time because i was explaining and writing in front of you but if you do it by your own with this trick you will solve this type of sum in less than 30 to 45 second okay so that's it for today thank you guys